to start with this one. I'll give you two minutes to try and solve this. This is just a reminder of what we did last time. So here, again, we always start with the same. Whenever you have a question like that, start with the same point. So what do we start with? By writing that equation, right? So what's that equation? Sorry? Okay. So stockholders' equity ending balance equals stockholders' equity beginning balance plus minus minus expenses minus dividend, and then we plug in the numbers. We have here. 70,000, 70,000 plus 10. Those two together are equal to a net, net loss or net income. In this case, it is minus 4,000. This is the net loss <coughs> minus dividends. So dividend is equal to 70 minus 70 plus 10 minus 4. That would be. So, any questions about that chapter? Okay, now in this chapter, we will talk about. We will talk about journal entries mostly. The focus here will be about the reporting process. How do we record the transaction? So, we learned in the previous chapter how to analyze. And it, the, the, the transactions that the company needs to record, right? We, what did we say about analyzing a transaction? You need to identify what? The accounts that are involved, and then you need to see whether they have increased or decreased. Here, it will be the next step. So here we will learn how to make journal entries. We will learn about what, how to post the information from, basically, from the journal, to the ledger, etc. Okay, so let's start with this one. Before we start talking about, before we start talking about journal entries, etc., we need to talk about the account. What do we mean by an account? Okay, so the account could be an asset account. It could be a liability account. Who can give me an example of an asset account? Yes. Cash. Cash. Yes. Checking. Checking account? Checking account, that means it's cash. Okay. It's also considered as cash. It's simply how the bank uh, use that. Okay? But it is cash. Yes? Inventory? Inventory. Accounts receivable. Accounts receivable. <coughs> land. Land, building. So property, land, and equipment as well. So we have all these things. Those are as an account. Wow, that was <laughs> that was sudden. It's not my fault. I don't know what's happened. Uh, can you guys hear me in the back? Excellent. I hope you're not watching YouTube or updating your Facebook. Promise? So the account, there's a simple form that we call the T account. This is the form of the T account here. And the reason we call it T-account is that it is like this. So you have one. You have the account. You have the account name. As you can see here, it is capitalized. So let's say cash. And then we have the left side and the right side. There's something that we need to understand. The left side, we call it debit, okay? The right side, we call it credit. <laughs> Debits and credits do not mean increase and decrease. You see, in English, you say left, right, okay? In French, you say à gauche, à droite. 
In Russian, you say naleva na prav. In accounting, you say debits and credits. It's simply a different way of saying that. Okay? Now, it's very important to remember that. Don't think of it, because some people sometimes think that, okay, so debit means increase and credit means decrease. It depends on the account. So for example, cash is a debit account. And we'll see in second one. But for now, just remember, the account has three parts. It has the title, which is capitalized, and then we have debits and credits. And then we have to make an entry for each, for each transaction. Every time this account changed, we remember when we were analyzing the transactions, we said that every transaction has a dual effect. It affects at least to account. Every time we have a change to the account, we have to put it here. Okay? Now, let's, I'm just going to show you this example. This is the same one that we had. It's still messed up. Give it a second. Okay. So this is the same transaction that we analyzed last time. Here, we are only looking at the changes that happened to the cash account. You remember, we purchased, the company purchased equipment, purchased supplies, etc. So here, we are only concerned about the transactions that happened under cash. <coughs> because this is an example. But you see, whatever we're doing here has to be done for each and every account. So, for example, we had owners of Subbyte invested $15,000 in the company in cash. What happened? Cash has increased by $15,000. Now, if you remember, cash is on which side of the equation? Yes? The left side of the equation, right? It was assets equals liability plus stockholders' equity. Right? So cash is here, it's to the left side. So any increase to cash will be on the same side of equation. So an increase in cash will be, we will enter it on which side? Here, left side. And we, call, we say that we have debited cash. So you debit cash. When you say debit cash, it means cash has increased. And when cash increases, you debit that account. Why? Because cash is an asset account. So all asset accounts are normally debit accounts. So they have normal debit balance. When they increase, you debit that account. If they decrease, you credit it. So you remember here later on, they pay salaries for 7000 the minus here was credit. As you can see, there is no minus anymore. Because the word credit, it simply implies that when you say cash was credited, 7,000, it, it automatically means that cash has decreased by 7,000. Do you understand that? Let me tell you from now. With all honesty, if you do not understand debits and credits, you will fail the course. Not that I will fail you, you will fail it yourself. There's no way you can move forward if you do not understand debits and credits. Everything we will be doing in the semester will be based on what we will be learning today and what we learned yesterday, not last week. You have to understand. It's very simple. When you debit an asset account, and when it increases, you debit. And vice versa when it comes to credit. Okay? At the end, you have the balance here. The balance is simply debit minus credit. When it is. When debits are more than credits, 
the account the balance will be on the debit side. When credits are more than debit, the balance will be on the credit side. So if we had equipment, equipment would be treated in the same way. If you buy a truck, your equipment account will increase, right? When it increases, you what do you do? Do you debit it or credit? Debit. Okay? Now, yes. Yes. So the balance at the end, well, generally speaking, okay? There are very weird sense times, but generally speaking, yes. So it's, as far as you're concerned, it's positive. It will be either on the debit side or on the credit side, because if it's negative, it will be on the other side. So it's not going to be negative. It's going to be on the other side. Cash, cash is generally, as, as an asset account, cash will normally have more debits than credits, right? You won't have minus $200. However, that happens sometimes. Let's say that the company wrote a check that bounced, so they overdrew money. They went the, all over their limit. At that time, they will have, they will have credit balance at that time. So it will be, those are exceptional cases. Now, you remember how we said that the accounting equation must always hold, assets must always equal liabilities plus stockholders' equity? Here we have the same thing. For each transaction, debits must equal credits. For each transaction. This is the basis of double entry accounting. And if you remember, that was simply because one account would increase, another account would decrease, right? So let's look at this example here, for example. Oh, okay, so we have supplies. The company purchased supplies and paid cash. <laughs> purchased supplies for 3000 They paid in cash 2000 and they left $1,000 on account. Right? When you buy supplies, Supplies is what kind of account? It's an asset account, right? So supplies have increased by 3,000. What do you do? You debit supplies, 3,000. What happened to cash? Cash has decreased by 2,000. When cash decreased, what do you do? You credit cash. So we credited cash 2,000. And then the remaining thousand was on account. It's a liability. It's accounts payable. Liabilities are on which side of the equation? Right side. So when a liability increases, where do you put it? On the right side, which is credit. Okay? So you credit accounts payable. As you can see here, total credit is equal to total debit. Those are 3,000 and 3,000. This, is, has all, this must always be the case. Total debit must always equal to credit. Any questions? <coughs> okay. This is what we said, talked about. When we have debit are greater than credit, we say that the account is or is a debit account, has a normal debit balance. <laughs> but asset, for example, when it's the other way around, but accounts payable, automatically the balance will be on the credit side. When you have, when liability, when credit exceeds debit. Okay? So let's start with them one by one. We already talked about assets, like cash, and now we have decided that because cash, cash is a debit account, so any increase will be on the debit side, any decrease in cash or in assets will be on the right side, will be on the credit side. 
okay? Liabilities, they are the other way around, right? They are on the other side of the equation. So they behave in exactly the opposite way. So when you have an increase in the liability, it will go on the credit side. When we have a decrease in liability, like when you pay in debt, you have a decrease in liability, what happens? You debit that amount. And you will see later on it will all fall uh, in place. And then you have the normal balance. Normal balance is on the side that it increases. So cash. The normal balance for cash is, sorry? Okay, debt, is debt. Normal balance for liabilities is credit. And hint, it's on the screen. See, here. And that's the second hint. Okay? So you have to forget about the fact that when you talk about debits and credits, we're not talking about increasing and decreasing. Debits and credits, left and right. This is it. Now how it will affect each, how this affects each account, that's a different story. So when you debit cash, what happens to cash? Increases. When you credit liability, what happens? When you credit, for example, accounts payable, it increases. Okay? If you get mixed up, rewrite the accounting equation. Liabilities is on the right side. Stockholders' equity is on the right side. So any increase in the right side will go on the right side of the D account. Okay? So an increase in liability will go on the credit side, will be credited to that account. Here, we're simply saying that they, ha they behave in opposite directions. So debits will increase assets, decrease liabilities. I will be repeating myself a lot because, again, this is very important. Remember when we talked about the alphabet? Now we're learning the multiplication table. You cannot do any math if you don't know that. And you cannot expect to have the calculator with you all the time. That was a joke. It was I noticed now that it wasn't fun. <laughs> so owner's equity, stockholders' equity is made up of different parts. So we'll have to look at each one separately. We have common stock and retained earnings, and then we also will talk about revenues and expenses and dividends. Okay? So I'm just going to write that specifically that in uh, the, the basically the stockholders' equity part of it. So stockholders' equity will be like this. We take earnings, then we have revenues minus expenses minus dividends. Am I correct? This is what we care about here. It's on the right side of the equation. Now we have to think of a change to each one of them and how it will affect stockholders' equity. So when common stock increases, what happens to stockholders' equity? Increases. So do you credit common stock or do you debit? Credit. Credit. So now, just to, to remind you, so we already agreed on this one, right? This is on the right side, so any increase in stockholders' equity will be on the right side, will be credited to stockholders' equity. Now, common stock, an increase in common stock will lead to an increase in stockholders' equity. Means that they behave in the same way. So an increase in common stock would go on the credit side. An increase in retained earnings is in the same way. It will increase stockholders' equity. So it will be credited to retained earnings. Dividends, an increase in dividends, what will it, uh, how will it affect stockholders' equity? It will, it will decrease it. So stockholders' equity will decrease when dividends increase. As a result, dividend is re, is acting in in the opposite way of stockholders' equity, right? 
Sign increase and dividend will go on the debit balance. It will go on the debit side. <coughs> and if you get mixed up, you see this transaction here, this, this equation, put it all in positive. Basically, you have assets plus expenses plus dividends. I just brought these on the other side. It's equal to liabilities plus common stock plus retail earnings plus revenue. This side is credit. This side is the left side, which is to mean it is debt. Any questions? So those are, we're saying the same thing over and over. We're just saying it in a different way. So you can think of it in any way you like. Just need to know that an increase in equipment will go on the debit side. You have to know that. You have to know that, for example, if the company pays dividends, the dividend amount will go on the debit side. Okay? We talked already about revenues as well. We talked about revenues. So for revenues, Again, when revenues increase, they will increase stockholders' equity. The more revenues the company earns, the higher stockholders' equity. As a result, when there's an increase in retained earnings, what do we do? We credit retained earnings. Uh, revenues, I'm sorry. When there's an increase in revenues, we credit revenues. When there is an increase in expenses, it will decrease stockholders' equity. And a decrease to stockholders' equity it should go on the left side. So it will go on the, basically to be debited to expenses. So when the company pays expenses, when, when the company recognizes an expense, this will go on the debit side. Any questions so far? Here we get to the normal balance. So we have assets, dividends, and expenses. We have a normal debit balance, right? The normal balance is debit. You have liabilities, stockholders' equity, retained earnings, and revenues, and common stock. They have, bless you, a normal credit balance. Okay? And questions? So here, those for, for the balance sheet, on the balance sheet, if you remember, we start with, started with assets, and then we included all the liabilities and stockholders' equity. Do you remember the balance sheet? You should remember the balance sheet. So if you remember, for the balance sheet, we have, we started by listing all the asset accounts, and then we listed all liabilities and stockholders' equity accounts, right? <coughs> so for, for that one, we care for balance sheet, we include those accounts. When we talk about income statement, we're talking about revenues and expenses. So it's basically the income statement when you will list all revenues and then you will list all expenses and the difference between the two will either be net income or net loss. Right? So this is as simple as that. So when, we, when we're talking about, and, and the reason why we, we put it this way is simply to say that when you talk about balance sheet accounts, you're talking about the accounts that will show up on balance sheet, which are assets and liabilities and stockholders' equity. They do not include revenues and expenses. You will never see on the balance sheet, you will never see revenues or expenses. Because revenues and, and expenses, they go on the income statement, okay? That information is summarized in one number at the end. What would that number be? Net income. Yes? Net income. Net income. So then you have net income that will go on retained earnings statement. Do you remember the second one? It will go on retained earnings statement. 
So that information, all the information in the income statement is summarized <coughs> in one term. That's net income or net loss. And that will go on retained earnings. Then you will see that retained earnings statement will summarize the information between retained earnings, dividends, and net income. And we will have one term coming out of that statement. That is retained earnings and the imbalance. It is that term which summarizes retained earnings and net income and dividends. And net income would be summarizing revenues and expenses. So it's that term, revenue, uh, the uh, retained earnings and the imbalance that will go on the balance sheet. It will go under the equity side. Okay? This is why you will never see dividends on the balance sheet. Why? Because it was included in retained earnings. So you're not going to include the same information twice. You don't need to include revenues and expenses on the balance sheet. And the reason why they do that is to avoid having like a really, really long list in one, one, one statement. Imagine that you have to put all the information in one statement. It will be, basically the balance sheet will be several pages long. No one will be able to actually read. By the time you reach the end, you would have forgotten what you read at the beginning. It's like our chapters, right? By the time you get to the second chapter, you forgot the first one. Then you blame me for the bad grades. So assets, an increase in assets will go on the debit side, an increase in expenses will go on the debit side. And if we had here also dividends, what would happen? Where would the increase go? On the debit side. Retained uh, liabilities, revenues, and equity will go with the, uh, the increase will go on the credit side. The decrease will be on the debit side. So we're saying, when you say that the increase will go on the debit side, or when you say that you, when, you debit it, it uh, when you debit an asset account, it increases, you're basically saying the same thing. Debit by itself does not mean increase. Debit an asset account, it means increase. Because debit a liability account, it means decrease. Any questions? Yes. Okay, so why do those expenses go up with debit and asset? Like why, how can this go down? On why does side? expenses? Yeah. Why wouldn't you just do revenue minus expenses then just go down? <coughs> like what do you mean by, can you explain why expenses go up? Sure. On the debit side? Sure. You mean this one here, why is it up? Yes. When you have the accounting equation, Okay, let's, let's explain it in a simpler way. When you have an expense, when you have an increase in expense, what happens to stop all the debt? Goes down. Goes down, right? So an increase in, an increase in uh, expenses will go on the same side as a decrease in stockholders equity. Now, stockholders equity. Where, the, where does the decrease in stockholders equity go? Is it on the left side or right side? Yeah. Remember that we have assets equals liabilities plus stockholders equity. So stockholders equity is on which side? So the plus will be on the right side. The plus will be on the right side. This is the minus. So the decrease will go on which side? I got it. It's because it's minus expenses. It's because it's minus expenses. And remember that when we say minus expenses, it's simply this minus indicates the effect on stockholders' equity. So when you have an increase in expenses, what you actually have is a decrease in stockholders' equity. As a result, when you have a D account here, talk about expenses, the increase in expense will take the opposite side of an increase in stockholders' equity. So the increase in stockholders' equity is here, so this is the one that we need to pick. As a result, it will be here. This is the increase in expenses. Okay? So this is to summarize it. You will have to answer those. Again, here we did it in different ways. Whenever you get confused, put all the terms in positive. This is how I do it. Ah. I would first look at this one, put everything in, basically in positive, 
and then whatever is on the left side will go on the left side that would be debit whatever is on the right side will go to uh, will be on the credit side okay so for assets what do we have here the plus will go on the left side dividend the plus will go on the left side expenses the plus will go on the left side the decrease will automatically go on the other side will go on the right side so the decrease in assets would be a credit on the other hand <coughs> sorry now we're talking about liabilities common stock retained earnings and revenues those are on the right side of the equation and because they are on the right side of the equation not here we're not talking about the accounting equation itself because here we're talking about the modified version of it this is where all the terms are in positive so you have depending on your personal preference you can think of it as how it affects stockholders equity or you can simply put it in this way and learn it okay so an increase in liabilities will go where okay. so let's start from the beginning assets debit does it increase or or increase or decrease <coughs> Oh, I'm supposed to write them. <laughs> yeah, we learned that, right? Okay, so let's do that. That's okay. Assets will be? So under debit, is it plus or minus? Plus. Credit. Minus. Dividends. Plus. Minus. 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 You guys sound like zombies. <laughs> <laughs> Minus and plus. plus. <laughs> Once you learn this, you are practically safe to move on to the next part. Okay? <clears throat> Remember, for every transaction, debits must equal credit. In the same way that for every transaction, total assets must equal total liabilities plus stockholders equity. Okay? So, let's do this. You guys deserve not only a smiley face. <laughs> That's a weird one. Give me one second. <laughs> I told you from the beginning, do not laugh at my handwriting or at my drawings. So I'll give you also a star. Because <laughs> you did very well. Accounts that normally have debit balances are. So here's the last one. Do not ask me for a smiley face. You did not deserve it this time. <laughs> but, so the first one, we have assets, expenses, and revenues. Assets and expenses are debit. So they have debit balances. But, expenses, but revenues is credit. Has a normal balance. It has a credit normal balance. Assets, expenses, and equity, same thing. Bless you. Assets, liability, and dividend. It's the liability that is not correct. So here is the revenue, equity, liability, and this is the winner. <coughs> this is to remind you of the relationship between the three, basically between the three statements. You remember how we talked about it earlier? Just today, we said that we start always with an income statement. The income statement will summarize this number. But basically, it will be summarized by this term, by net income or net loss. So the, net, the income statement itself can be considered as if, like, we can think of it as, as if it was, as if it were included in that term. So when we have here net income or net loss, this one actually summarizes the whole income statement, right? And then <coughs> retained earnings, in turn, 
was summarized. The beginning balance of retail earnings, it was summarized. And the net income, <coughs> which has already summarized the income statement, the basically revenues and expenses. And it will also include in it, include in it uh, the dividend. So when we look at on the balance sheet, when we have common stock and retained earnings, this term here is a summary. It's not, basically, it, we did not calculate it like that. We did not find it like that. We calculated it basically using that income, and then, which came from revenues and expenses. And then we added, we, we subtracted dividends. That would give us ending retained earnings, ending balance of retained earnings. Any questions? Okay. Here. This is how it's written, and this is the expanded accounting equation, right? So the expanded equation we have under, on assets, do we have plus or minus? So under assets, we have debit. Debit is plus or minus. So plus means an increase. Minus means a decrease. Do you have an increase or decrease? So it's plus. Under credit, minus. minus. Liabilities, minus. minus, plus. Common stock, minus. retained earnings. Minus. Plus. Dividends. Minus. And? Expenses? Okay. Now, one, another way if you want to think of it, to see which one is a plus and which one is a minus, or how it, I'm not going to confuse with them. Forget about what I was saying. <laughs> personally, when I think of it, and I said that before, I'm in the so I think of it in this way. You have the minus here, which flips the minus be, be, before dividends, and the minus before expenses will simply flip flip the numbers. Do you remember in math, if you multiply any number by minus one, you will flip the, 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 the signs, right? This is the same thing. Because of the minus behind them, you will flip the signs. Okay, so Kate Brown, president of Hair it is <laughs> Gavin, funny sense of humor. So, has just rented space in a mall, okay? And she wants to open uh, this beauty salon and they want to, she wants to start recording the transactions. Identify the balance sheet account that Hair it is. Hair it is. <laughs> that her salon will likely need to record the trans what so what are the accounts that you expect such company to need? Okay? What's the first thing that you expect that they need to basically that company to need? Cash. Cash is debit or credit account? <laughs> debit. What give me another ask? Yes. Supplies. Supplies. And yes. Equipment. These are all debit accounts. Liabilities. When you think of liabilities, what do you think? What kind of liabilities you might have? Yes. Salaries. Yes. Rent. Sorry? Rent. Accounts payable. Now, just remember, salaries and rent, those are not the salaries and rent expenses. Those are the salaries and they are the rent payable. Those are whatever has accumulated. So let's say in the middle of the month, this is whatever uh, she owes her employees before paying them. Once she pays them, they're not a debt anymore. They become an expense. We'll learn about that later on. Equity. That's easy. Those are, yes? Stock. Common stock. What else? You 
just said some of them, yes. Revenues. So basically you have revenues and expenses, etc. However, remember, revenues and expenses are not, so they are accounts that she will need them, she will need, but they are not balance sheet accounts. So in the exam, if you're asked a question, you have to be careful about which one we're talking about. Remember that revenues and expenses are income statement accounts. Okay? But she will need those accounts to make her uh, entries. So now we get to the recording process. And it all starts usually when the company receives like a bill or an invoice. Okay? They ha we have to enter it because later on it has to be paid. So it starts with like a physical document or something like that. Uh, basically a document, a proof of the, of the transaction. A proof that the transaction occurred. Otherwise, how would the accountant know that, for example, there was a sale or that the company purchased a computer? There must be some kind of documentation, right? So they take that information and they analyze the transaction. They identify, they identify the accounts that are involved. So first, what they do is they analyze the transaction. They enter it in the journal. The journal basically is a chronological order of transactions. And it includes debits and credits, and we'll see that in a second. And then, final step will be when this information is transferred to the ledger. So let's do that <coughs> step by step. The journal. The journal is called Book of Original Entry. This is the first place where the transaction is recorded. Now, most companies have more than one journal. They have like sales journal, they have purchase journal, etc. But not all of them. However, all companies, they must have at least the general journal. So as far as you are concerned for this course, whenever we talk about the journal, we're talking about the general journal. For your assignment, it's the general journal, unless it was otherwise stated. So if you read the journal, that means the general journal, okay? This is where all the transactions are recorded in chronological order, and every transaction has to be recorded separately. Remember how we analyze it, like when the company purchased equipment or supplies or provided services? or pay the bill for their advertising services that they received for their, uh, all these things, each one of them has to be treated as a separate transaction. It's entered separately, okay? Now the advantage of journal is that it also, it's not, it does not only keep the events that happen in chronological order. It's not just that it keeps this, these records organized in a chronological order. But it also explains both sides of basically of, of the all the, basically both sides of the equation, and it explains also the changes to the accounts involved. So basically, it it explains that it, it describes the dual effect of that transaction on the various uh, accounts that were involved. Okay, this helps actually prevent or at least identify any errors or mistakes that happen when, you, when the company records those transactions. So when we look at the journal, the first thing you need to do is always the same thing. You analyze the transaction. So here we have on September 1st, stockholders invested $50,000 cash in the corporation in exchange for Shares of stock, and on the same day, South by purchased computers, computer equipment for 7,000. How many transactions do we have here? Two. We have two. We have the investment, and we have the purchase of computer equipment. Those are two different transactions. Each one of them has to be treated separately. So the first transaction, 
What are the answers for you involved? So, yes? Yes, debit and there, there will always be debits and credits in every transaction. Now, what are the accounts that were involved? Cash and? Common stock. Which account is a debit account? Cash. Why? Which account was debit? Not which account was, is, has a normal debit balance. Which account, ha so what happened to cash? Cash has increased, right? When cash increases, what do you do? You debit. Common stock has also increased. When common stock increases, what do you do? Credit. So the debit, the account that was debited is cash. We enter it first. And then we enter on the next line. We enter the credit, the account that was credited. You see here, the indentation here, this space here, it simply indicates that the first one was debit, the second one is credit. Okay? Yes? You have to do the debit one first. You always start with the debit. Why? Because debit is on the left side. Simply because of that. So debit is on the left side, and this is how you try to basically, you see, when you look at it this way, you see that there's a difference between, basically, the, uh, uh, there's an indentation before. So there's a space before common stock. It simply shows that this account was credited, okay? And then you have two columns. So basically, the first thing that you need to do is to enter the date. September 1st, what happened? Cash decreased. Cash increased by 15,000. The amount here is debit, under debt. Common stock was credited, 15,000. Again, if you can see, as you can see here, credits are equal to debit. And then under that, what do you include? An explanation. <coughs> Basically, you, <coughs> sorry. You include an explanation of uh, you include an explanation of that transaction to say that okay, why did cash why was cash debited fifteen thousand? Because that was an issuance of stocks. Okay. The second part of of this problem here is transaction two, the company versus equipment for cash. So we have equipment and cash. What has the equipment? It has increased. Equipment has increased. When equipment increases, what do you do? Do you debit it or credit? Debit. So we know that we need to debit equipment. What happened to cash? Cash has decreased. When cash decreases, we credit cash. And we always start with a debit account. So we debited equipment. And then we credited cash. You always do it this way. You always start with debit, credit. And here you have also debit, credit. Now, the reference here usually is left, originally, it's left empty. When, when they start, when they first enter the transaction. Later on, it will be turned up. This here, day one, it means that this is on the first page of the general journal. This, imp this information is important later on to relate it and what we will be actually inc including later on on the reference is the account number. Those are not standardized account numbers. Those are numbers that every company uses for themselves, okay? The reason why this is done is to be able to relate this info or to transfer this information directly to that account. Now, like we said, we have simple transactions and they have compound transactions. So simple transactions, they involve one debit account, one credit account. Compound entries, they, have, they might have more than one credit account and more than one debit account. 
<laughs> so for, if you remember, you like, okay, so on July 1st, Butler Company purchases a delivery truck that costs $14,000. They pay in cash $8,000 and agree to pay the remaining six later on. What are the accounts first? We need to identify. This, you always have to do it this way. Analyze the transaction. What were the accounts that were involved? Yes. Uh, equipment, uh, cash, and accounts payable. Equipment, cash, and accounts payable. That's correct. So, what happened to equipment? It has increased by 14,000. Right? So, when, when equipment increases, what do you do? We debit, right? Because equipment is an asset. <coughs> So we debit equipment for $14,000. What about cash? What happened to cash? Cash decreased by $8,000. When cash decreases, what do we do? So we credit cash $8,000. What about the remaining $6,000? It's on account, which is to mean accounts <laughs> Payable. What happened to accounts payable? Sorry? It has increased. And when a liability account, like accounts payable, increases, what do we do? We credit it. So we credit accounts payable. This is why it's not, it's wrong to think of debits and credits as increase and decrease. So it's when you debit an account that this, that you can use increase or decrease. Because here we credited cash, but cash has decreased. We credited accounts payable. Accounts payable has increased. So it's the combination of the two terms that you can think of it as increase or decrease, but not each one of them. Okay? And then you also have it on include the uh, uh, explanation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. In many cases here we will not be including the explanation for time purposes, but generally to include an explanation to make sure that uh, to make sure that anyone who reads that transaction will be able to understand where it came from and why they entered it in this way. And to make sure that there was no mistake in making that journal entry. Okay, so now we get to the general ledger. The general ledger is different from the journal. The general ledger is basically it's one place where you have the balances of all the company's accounts. Okay? You have them in all the company's accounts. Uh, of all the company's accounts. You say that, okay, so at this moment, what's the balance in supplies? In this specific moment, what's the balance in retained earnings? And usually, the ledger would start. The ledger would start with asset accounts. So in the same way that they appear on the balance sheet and then on the income statement. Okay? Now, every company has what we call a chart of accounts. Those are the numbers that I was talking to, uh, uh, to you about earlier. Those are the uh, numbers that will go on, uh, basically under the reference column of the journal entries. And those are not standardized. By that, I mean that every company will have their own chart of accounts. And the reason is that not all companies have the same business. Right? So like a law firm does not necessarily have inventory because they don't sell products. They provide services. OK? And here, usually, as you can see, you have gaps in between. Who can tell me why do they have gaps in between the numbers? Yes? So that they can have more things available on there later on. Exactly. So if they want to add a new account, let's say that this was, uh, uh, this was, for example, Best Buy before they introduced the Geek Squad. They didn't have any services, etc. And then they added them later on. As you can see here, we first have assets, then liabilities. After that, we have stockholders' equity. 
And then, then we have revenues and expenses. They always keep gaps to allow for future expansion. Okay? So we talked about the T account. However, while the T account is easy to understand, right? You look at it and it's easy to, it's, it's easy to basically calculate the difference between debits and credits and it's easy to see where you can include it. However, it's not very efficient, right? Imagine that you will have to put same T account for all the accounts that you have. It becomes, and for every transaction, it will become too long, too cumbersome. So most companies, they actually use this standardized form. It has three columns, three amount columns. It has the debit column, it has the credit column, and then it has the banks. This number here, <coughs> what's this one? This is the account number that shows here. So cash is 101. Here it tells you that this is the account number 101. It's cash, it's title here, cash. And for every transaction, this is exactly the same information that was entered in the, that was entered before. So you have June 1st. Cash was debited, 25,000. The balance was 25,000. Here, assuming that before that it was zero. Okay? And then, June 2nd, there was another transaction where cash was credited 8,000. So the balance is actually. The advantage of this one is that the balance will be available after every transaction. So at any point in time, after every transaction, the company can tell what the balance in each account is. Now this is very important, right? Companies may companies would want to know at each point in time what's the balance in all their accounts. So this is why this form, which is called the standard form of account, is popular. Now, once we finish with making the journal entries, this information is transferred to the general ledger. As you remember, the general ledger will deal with individual accounts. Okay? So the first step here, you transfer the dates. Okay? And then, you copy the number here, the account number. You copy it to the account number, the debit, the account, uh, the number of the account that was debited. You copy it next to the account, and then the same thing. You do the same thing for uh, this account. Okay. Any questions? You copy the debit amount here, copy it here, and then you have J1 and J1. You do the same thing here for the credit and the credit. So basically what we're doing here is we're transferring the information from the journal to the ledger, but this is a two-way communication. The the ledger also will, from the ledger, will take the number of the account and we will in include that under the reference. So in this case, if anyone looks at the, jour at the journal entry at that point, they can point directly to that account. And anyone who looks at the ledger, they will be able to see where this change came from, they can relate it, they can link it back or trace it back to the, uh, they can trace it back to the journal entry. Do you see how? So this is clear here, right? We transfer the date, the number of the account to the journal, back to the uh, journal, and then the debited amount and the credited amount. 
Any questions? As you can see here, most of the time, the explanation is left blank here. Why? Because if you, if the, if you need to look at the explanation, you can simply look at, journal, uh, at the journal entry. There's no point in replicating that information. It's here. However, you can simply just look, trace it back to the journal entry. OK? Any questions? So posting usually transfers journal entries to, is when you transfer journal entries to the, the ledger. It cannot happen before journalizing, because the first thing that happens is taking the journal entry, right? So we have, whenever we are making a journal entry, when you want to, <coughs> when you want to do that, the first thing is you need to analyze the transaction and decide whether you need to record it or not. Next, you need to identify the accounts that are involved, okay? Once you have the account involved, I identify it. You look at the change in each account. Did it increase or decrease? And then you look at the account to see whether you need to debit it or credit. Once you know this information, basically you have the journal entry. So for example here, on October 1st, CR Bird invests $10,000 cash in an advertising company to be known as Pioneer Advertising Agency and here they invested ten thousand dollars cash the first thing you need to do is do you record it yes or no yes what are the accounts that were involved cash and common stock so we have cash and common stock involved what happened to cash cash has increased stockholders equity what happens basically to common stock? Common stock increased. So you enter here. You know that cash has increased by 10,000. Common stock has increased by 10,000. Cash is an asset account. When cash increases, what do we do? So we debit. We know that we are going to debit cash. So we debit cash. What happens to common stock? Common stock has increased. So what do we do? We credit. So we credit <coughs> common stock. Then you make the journal entry. Again, you start with the date. Then you will have the debit account. And then you put a credit account, the account that was credited. So we put first the account that was debited. Then we put the account that was credited. We put here an explanation. This is the explanation of the transaction. And here they put the reference numbers after. So this is, they talk about the final thing. And then you transfer the journal entry to the ledger. This is where you post it to the ledger. Under cash, here we're using the T account. So cash was debited, common stock was credited. And you put here the date. So October 1st, 10,000. October 1st, 10,000 was credited. Any questions? OK, let's do the next one. <laughs> On October 1st, Pioneer purchases office equipment, costly $5,000, by signing a three-month, 12%, $5,000 note payable. For now, ignore those things. Think about it simply as by signing a $5,000 note payable. <coughs> do you, first of all, do we record it? Yes or no? Yes. What are the accounts that are involved? <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Equipment. And? No space. What happened to equipment? Increase. Equipment increased by 5,000. Note payable. What happened to note payable? Note payable increased by 5,000. Now, when they increase, 
when they increase, what do you do next? Do you do the debit credit analysis? When you when equipment, which is an asset account, increases, what do you do? We debit equipment, and what when uh, not payable, which is a liability account, increases, what do you do? We credit, right? And here, as you can see, the two sides of the equation have to be equal. It's not that now we started with debit and credit, we can't start messing up the accounting equation. Both of them have to be correct. Both sides of the equation. And at the same time, debit and credit must be equal. So here we know that we are going to debit equipment. So we start with equipment. So October 1st, we have equipment is debited 5,000 and notes payable is credited 5,000. Again, debits are equal to credits. After that, what do we do? Post it to, or is it posted to the ledger, right? So we look at the two accounts. We have equipment account and we have notes payable account. For the date, and you put each amount on the side that was affected. So basically, it, uh, we have we debited equipment, so we'll put it under the debit side. We credited notes payable, we put it on the credit side. Any questions? Good. On October 2nd, uh, Pioneer receives a $1,200 cash advance for from our knocks applying for advertising services that are expected to be completed by December 31st. Do you record it, yes or no? Okay. Now the company received cash. Cash advance, so what happens to cash? Cash has increased by $1,200. What's the other account? Accounts receivable means that the company did not receive the cash, but expect to receive cash. Read it carefully. Read the sentence carefully and tell me what happened in English, plain English. Not in accounting English, in plain English. What happened? Yes? Did the company provide the service? Did the company receive a service? If the company received the service, it would be an expense. Did the company provide the service? Did they provide it? Not yet. They are going to. So, revenue, in order to recognize it as a revenue, it must have happened. The company must have already earned the money. Did the company actually earn the money? It's in advance. So, the account that is involved is called unearned revenue. This is going to be a revenue later on, but for now it's unearned revenue. Now, unearned revenue is a liability account. Why? Because the company now owes are not a service. They don't owe them money. They don't have to pay them in money, but they have to pay them in service. They owe them a service. This service is a liability. It's a debt. Later on, when they actually do that, they will we will continue that on Friday.